Ripple XRP, we could potentially be seeing the great reset happening or a collapse incoming. I mean, this is somewhat of a warning because of what has been happening with Evergrande. We're going to be taking a look at what David Schwartz has said in relation to XRP and whether the price or not will affect it as that bridge currency and also on demand liquidity as well. We will be looking at the price action for both XRP and XLM coin today or Stellar. So all I ask from you are two things, which is to smash that like button and to subscribe to the channel as well. So the first big bit of news that we have coming in today at the start of the week is enough is enough with $300 billion in debt. Oh, it's been absolutely crazy for Evergrande. So the courts have decided that it's now time to liquidate Evergrande in general. So they're obviously in big trouble, right? They've not been able to meet their interest payments on their debt. It's, it's going to be affecting not only China, but the rest of the world globally. So we have that order for the liquidation process. The reason as to why they also got into debt is because of the amount of sales that they were doing. It reduced by quite a lot. There were a few sales of homes. And in addition to this, there were also less ways of them to raise further funds. But I think even if they were to do that, I think that this scenario would have been inevitable because of the the fact that their revenue was declined in terms of those homes. So now with the courts ordering that, the question is whether or not the Chinese courts will recognize the Hong Kong's ruling because this is where the ruling came from. So we'll have to see where that will go. I mean, it's going to have a big impact in terms of the companies that actually do business with Evergrande, but also on a global scale, you know, will foreign investors be investing in China anymore because of this massive collapse that we've seen. And Evergrande is the second largest company that we have in China. So we have over here from Metamam that XRB being low in price does not make it better for payments. Now, this is what David Schwartz has said when he was questioned whether or not the price of XRP would affect the payments and in terms of being the bridge currency. So we're going to take a look at a bit of this clip, only roughly around about a few minutes, and then we're going to be talking about on-demand liquidity. Thank you. Um, in the past, um, I believe you stated that XRP cannot be cheap. Um, what did you mean by that? Did you mean like dollar amounts? And also, and before you answer that, let me just throw this other question. Uh, what happened to Na Naveen Gupta? I don't know if this question was answered already. Like, all of a sudden, like, this whole thing back-to-back -back, like with Chris Larson and then Naveen Gupta stepped down, uh, you know, from managing director for South Asia. And then... Yeah, um, I'm sad to see him go, yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, I don't, I don't... Yeah. You know, people stay in a... People only stay in one place for so long. I mean, it's always... It's always kind of... Sad when people when people go and you know, it's also nice to see former Ripplers like being successful elsewhere. It helped us to have connections with other companies. We have somebody who's worked here. I run into someone who I used to know at Ripple, and they're working at some other company, and they sort of spread, you know, good things about Ripple. So I guess that's the other, that's the nice thing. Um, as far as what I meant, what, so there's a specific quote that kind of annoying to me because it's been repeated yeah. by many people taking out of context. Like, like, but let me do it. Yeah, so to be very clear about what I was saying in the quote that I was talking about, um, the cost of XRP doesn't directly impact the cost of a payment. So in other words, if I want to buy something from you and the value of that thing is, uh, let's say it's the equivalent to a million US dollars, like the amount of XRP, I'm, the price of XRP is going to determine if I'm going to pay you an XRP. The price of XRP will determine how much XRP I have to give you. But it won't make the payment any cheaper or more expensive, right? If the price of XRP is very high, I'll give you fewer XRP, but it'll cost me more to get them. And if it's, the price is low, I'll have to give you a lot of XRP, but I paid less for each one. So th th there's no such thing as like cheap XRP making payments cheap or expensive XRP making payments expensive. And that's the point that I was trying to make there, that the price of XRP doesn't determine whether payments are cheap or expensive. But what does happen is in general the higher the sort of market cap of the asset it's not so much the price per unit but the market cap does impact the ability to use um the asset for payment so for example let's say i wanted to buy a house that was worth a million usd and i wanted to use bitcoin to do it right back when bitcoin was like a hundred dollars you couldn't realistically use bitcoin to pay a million dollars because you would the market didn't have enough liquidity. Like if I wanted to buy a million dollars worth of Bitcoin back then, I would have pushed the price up. And then when I gave the million bit the million dollars worth of Bitcoin to you, let's say to buy your house, when you go to sell those, you would push the price down. So you would take a loss on the buy and I would take a loss on the sell and that would make the payment suck for both of us. But today I can buy a million dollars worth of Bitcoin without moving the market. And you can sell a million dollars worth of Bitcoin without moving the market. So the higher 
it's not so much the price, it's more the market cap, but really it's not quite, like a higher price tends to mean a higher market cap, but a higher market cap tends to mean higher liquidity. It's really more like the sort of availability of liquidity that determines how easily you can use an asset for payments when you don't have closed loops. Obviously so what he's basically saying here is that the actual cost of XRP is currently sitting at around about 50 cents. It doesn't determine the actual cost of the payment. So for what you're transferring, let's say it's like $500,000. And basically this is what RippleNet does. It's that on-demand liquidity. It allows for instant access of that cross-border payments to actually happen without needing the funding up front, right, for these financial institutions. And so what does XRP coin do itself? Well, the token is used as that bridge currency and that is essentially used so that funds can actually be moved in real time without needing that upfront capital. And this is a solution that Ripple essentially provides. So it's more about the markets needing liquidity, that on-demand liquidity rather than the cost of XRP itself. And I think that he pretty much explains it quite well in that video. From a digital asset investor, we have over here here Jay Clayton talking about the SEC and Ripple decision. I mean Jay Clayton was actually the person that even filed for this lawsuit in the first case it wasn't Gary Gensler so we're going to take a look at his thoughts now that we are a couple of years down the line in the lawsuit. Of course your last uh, uh, filing like last case before you, you left was against Ripple. Any thoughts you have on how the court judgments came out of Ripple obviously there was kind of a mitigated uh, with some wins for the SEC and some others for XRP and uh, and, uh, and, and Ripple, like, what's your view on it, looking back at it right now, like two, three years uh, after you left office? Well, look, the, the, the way the court is now, and this is, a, this is a case that has not been finally resolved, or, yeah. uh, there are appeals and, and the like, but if you look at the um, distinction I made at the beginning of our discussion between securities transactions that are for the purpose of capitalism, where I said we have very rigorous regulations, um, and that securities regulation for secondary trading. You look at what the court did, it said, hey, that capital raising transaction was a securities transaction. Now, the court found that the secondary trading transaction and its definition of secondary trading transaction was not. We'll see how that goes on appeal. We'll see how both of them go on appeal. Yeah. But the, the point I want to make is that we rigorously regulate the, regular, the raising of capital for the general public and that has not changed. So it seems like as if he still stands on his decision, but the question is why the interviewer didn't also ask him about Ethereum as well and whether or not it is classed as a security. It still seems like as if that is the elephant in the room. So XRP coin today, we are currently trading at 0.5059. We are down by 1.28% on the one day chart. For the 24 hour volume, we are up by 14.95% and we're trading at $696.4 million. So yesterday, in terms of the 24 hour volume, we were actually down, I think we were sitting at $29 billion. Now we are at 38 billion. So the volume has increased by 26.81%. In the earlier hours of the morning for today, we were trading 0.4996. So we actually did come below that 50 cent level, but we've gone now to that 50 cent mark. On the seven day chart, we are down by 3.5%. So on the 3rd of February, we were just sitting below 52 cents at 0.5199. It is only a two and a half cent move up from here to where we're going to that 53 price target. That is where I've currently got my eyes on. I mean, it's been a bit choppy right the past week. We were at 53 cents, 0.5369 on the 30th of January. We took that massive dip all the way to 0.4909 just on the start of February. And we've come back up here by two cents. It's not really found that support level at 53 cents at all. On the one month chart, we are down by 11.46%. Again, just not finding any sort of strength within that support. So I want XRP coin to be able to hit 53 cents. If we do retrace her, we could potentially go to 48 cents and probably bounce back off from it and then head on to that 50 cent mark. Let's have a look at Stellar X Lem coin. We're currently trading at 11 cents. We are down by 0.4% on the day on the one week we are down by 4.7 percent i mean again on the 30th of january we were doing well just above that mid range of the 11 cents we were trading at 0.116 now we actually did go below the 11 cent level so we broke that we went to 0.108 
However, we were able to slowly recover and climb back up to 0.112. I mean, on the one month chart, we are down by 7.5%. And now that we are at 11 cents, pretty much, it is only a one cent move up to that 12 cent mark where we were back in January. On the year though, for Stella, we are pretty good. I mean, we are up by 16.9%. So despite it's actually been at 11 cents right now, you'll see over here that before, back in July, we were just below that 10 cent level. And actually we haven't even gone below that 10 cent level ever since then. So we are still doing pretty good in terms of that. For Stella XLM, I wanna see it hit 12 cents first and then make our way on to 13 cents. Guys, if you want daily Ripple XRP and Stella XLM coin news, subscribe to the channel and like the video as well.